title. I know, I haven't written that one yet. <laughs> so in the calendar, I have the names of those of you who contacted me that you were interested in reading. And I am going to draw, a, draw the reading order will be by draw. So those of you who contacted me get to read first, and anyone else who wants to read can. I read this one, and it just really, this is about the Trojan woman by um, Euripides, and it just really spoke to me how it explores the experience of the other. Um, so, yeah. It's called, it's just called the Trojan woman for now. <laughs> but experience of the other poured out, explored. These women weep and wonder at their various sentences. Will they be slaves to their enemies or worse, wives? Whatever their fate, they have no hope left of happiness. Their warriors are dead, responsibility completely eclipsed by the scripts of women for mourning and being forced to move forward. Women now must bear punishment and administer it. Still, they have no agency as they await assignments of their fate. Andromache gave her lord's presence the tribute of hushed lips and eyes quietly downcast. She does not deserve her fate, but she hates and loathes the woman who casts away the once beloved and takes another in her arms of love, sentences her to walk submissively in rags of robes, shivering with anxiety, head scythe and cropped. Lamentation and suffering become action as self and other blend. In solidarity with... New Orleans um, in Louisiana and Samarang City in Indonesia. I'd also like to read along with a friend of mine who's reading today in Houston. Oh, right. <laughs> and um, this one is for my daughter who's sitting back there. I saw her making some pancakes the other day. <laughs> she sifted flour, sugar, care, and torn off bits of quiet prayer then sprinkled blue eternity into our worn-out mixing bowl. Then she cracked an egg and outspilled every question answered in the gold yolk of splendid heaven in its circle of acceptance. Then she stirred like she was reading a Bible, and then she ladled flat pools of truth on the pan, which was searing with the wholeness of faith after the drops of doubt had sizzled and were gone, like the test of water, like the moment a thought becomes home. She said he was waiting at the table, that he loved pancakes as much as earth, but I didn't see him, for she had me captured, stock still in the kitchen, and she fed me like religion when my daughter made pancakes for God. Yeah, that's the problem with peace. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the problem with peace? It's your call. Uh, the problem with peace, our teacher taught us, each side sees war ends when they hold shovels. Seems there are high ideals causing a fuss. The problem with peace, our teacher taught us, is we won't throw ideals under a bus. Even when war reduces our homes to hovels, the problem with peace our teacher taught us. Each side sees war ends when they hold shovels. Uh, a lot of my stuff just comes out rhythmic. I don't call myself a, I still always call myself a poet. I don't really call myself a songwriter, but sometimes it comes out musically. This is Listless Indifference. Hey, everybody, here's a new one. Some kid got busted for waving a gun. Nothing new about the way it was done. And now we can't go back to good old days. Begging for a chance to show what we're made of. But when we get the chance, we do it again. We let another boy kick face in the sand. 
What often strips us is this listless indifference when a witness stands on by like it's entertainment. Hey, everybody, let's catch up on some news. Another kid got busted sucking up booze. And yet another finds his way to a drug or a bullet. How many graves here have yet to be dug? And watch us kick back on the couch and complain. As we watch the channel to check on the rain. But when we turn back, it happens again. Columbine is now a historic friend. What often strips us is this listless indifference when our fellow worshippers are following sin. Now, let's change our listless indifference now. We're gathered here today to figure out how. Don't go down like everybody's going. Don't go down like everybody's going down. This one I wrote specifically for this event. Um, the way things kind of happened, I saw about the event, signed up, something on the news inspired me that triggered something in my history and I wrote this. Um, what I saw on the news, I hope I don't get uh, emotional, but what I saw on the news was um, <clears throat> the Syrians trying to leave just to find somewhere. And without all the political stuff, I just saw it from a human level <clears throat> about people wanting to find a peaceful place to lay their head. <clears throat> that then triggered in me, um, I come from an immigrant background, a lot of times I forget that. One side of my family were running from uh, the Nazis invading Poland and came here and settled in New York, leaving Poland. And then uh, my other side of the family, my mother, my grandmother and grandfather separately came across the border from Mexico. Met a couple generations, here I am. Um, but my grandfather walked and swam to, came to, this, to come to this country and we lost a few relatives even before I was born. Um, so there were sacrifices made, and that's what I saw on TV, was sacrifices being made for a family. <clears throat> so this is a shout out <clears throat> to all the immigrants in this world just trying to find a safe place to settle, <clears throat> to grow and do good. I got the rhythm to keep going. I got the rhythm to keep going. I got the rhythm to keep going. Two weeks walking and my legs ain't broken. I got the rhythm to keep going. I got the rhythm to keep going. I got the rhythm to keep going. Two weeks walking and my legs ain't broken. I've been walking for days and miles, grabbing my needs for base survival. I'm fleeing from bodies in piles, not even sure if my friends are my rivals. Don't need much but food and water, some place to lay to rest my father, who couldn't suffer the deep soul trauma. I beg, don't turn away my brother. I got the rhythm to keep going. I got the rhythm to keep going. I got the rhythm to keep going. Two weeks walking and my legs ain't broken. I got the rhythm to keep going. I got the rhythm to keep going. I got the rhythm to keep going. Two weeks walking and my legs ain't broken. Our earth is formed in a circle land. A ball of people living, dying for a peaceful strand. I can't give up even if they say my life is banned. The future of my children not completely out my hands. What borders on protection? Could only be misperception. We're all an immigrant of lone discretion, tracing roots to a birthplace session. So I got the rhythm to keep going. I got the rhythm to keep going. I got the rhythm to keep going. Two weeks walking and my spirit ain't broken. I got the rhythm to keep going. I got the rhythm to keep going. I got the rhythm to keep going. Two weeks walking and my spirit ain't broken. Thank you very much.
Um, there's, oh, sorry, I'm reading in, so, I'm sorry, Marianna Dunn, I got so caught up with the logistics, I'm sorry, and I'm from Sugar Hollow, which is that way, a long way, and I'm reading in solitary with Capu, Italy, and St. Louis, U.S., <laughs> okay? So, um, there's been a lot of flag waving lately, and um, the flag that's been waved has not been the American flag, it's been the Confederate flag. And it's been waved by people that say the Civil War had nothing to do with slavery, and the Confederate flag has nothing to do with racism. Well, my ancestors were planters, and I have their letters in a box under my bed. So I'm going to draw from a couple of letters. And so the first one is um, my great-grandmother, my great-great-grandmother, trying to figure out why anybody would want to run away. So I will read her words. Um, actually, I'm sorry. You're going to read you're going to read this. I'm sorry. I'm going to read the appellate. So I'll read her words. So we'll start with you. Okay? And this was inspired also by Robert Hagen's Runagate, Runagate, if you've ever read that. Free as a bird. Thorn deep, 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 down where the frog sounds. Night sounds. Black on black. Tangled deep cannot find you. Down to the berry banked waters. Wade away. Descent of night. Armstead ran away and went to the Yankees as Sherman's army was returning through here to Memphis. And I think we have others that will go yet if they remain long in Memphis. A great many have gone from here. They are dying by the hundreds with smallpox and other diseases. They know it, but still they go. They wish to know for themselves what it is to be free as a bird. Many thousand gone. But I can see your silhouettes descending still. Shadows by the hundreds, wordlessly descending. Heads bent as though in prayer, processing downward. Yet your shadows rise into that lacerating sanctuary to which we all are bound. And this one, I'll let you guys switch. And you can be the italic person, mm -hmm. and you can be the... the um, the part, I didn't explain the three voices. One is taken from the letters. So this time she's going to be reading from the letters. The other is taken from the song lyrics of enslaved people. So you're reading from the song ly lyrics of enslaved people. And the third is my voice. So we will start. This is called Miss Fanny is Needed Back Home. And we'll start with you. As I write, the stillness is broken by the low moan of Aunt Adeline. The cook can see through the kitchen window. I am troubled in the mind. Her young daughter in the plicked on the overseer's hand. The distressing news reached us through one of the neighbor boys that Calvin was badly. Brown feet scarcely scraping the ground. Wounded in the late battle at Manassas Junction, Aunt Adeline. I am troubled in the mind. She has been pulled from her sick bed to the whipping tree. Is in great distress for Callie, is her idol and a more deserving one. Ask my lord what I should do. Now the cook is shoving torn rags into her ears. Never had, she says, if possible, come to her, for if Calvin dies from his wound. As she prepares a hamper for Miss Fanny's journey of mercy, she thinks it will derange. I am troubled in the mind. I speak with the people of Cairo, Egypt, and Montreal, Canada. Resolutions beyond blame. Do I spring for a patch when you blow smoke nooses around your asthmatic son's neck? Do I watch you exhale your children like wildflowers fluff one by one, floating to foster care in the state's scarred embrace? Do I slap your pursed lips into a flat smile? Do I try to halt the wind? Turn off your thoughts, focus on the tone of the singing bowl. Let it fill your mind. There's only the tone. This is easy. Let the frustrations, the hurry, and the frenzy of the week fall away to be replaced by the tone. As it pervades your mind, there is only the vibration of sound. The tone recedes. You're empty now and serene. In this quiet place, imagine colors, deep and vivid blue, yellow, green, 
and now red, full of vibrating energy. The colors blend and merge into an intense brightness, filling you and radiating from your hands and the top of your head into the outer world, upward and outward, covering the globe with its positive force on its way to wherever your poem send it. The next poem is called uh, Refugee. And after I saw um, a picture of a little boy uh, washed up on the shore, um, this, this came to mind. There are some songs where words won't quite fit, but they take you where you want to go, down a winding lane to a place with no name that you'll know when you get there someday. In a world that's gone wrong, you stumble along on the stones in the road on your way, down a winding lane to the place with no name that you'll know when you get there someday. You carry your home in the song of your heart. Deep inside you, it burns as a poem in sunshine and rain in the place with no name that you bring along wherever you go. So thank you. This next song is also about world peace. It's called What the World Needs Now. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it was recorded also back in the 60s to music by Burt Bacharach. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. Lord, we don't need another mountain. There are mountains and hillsides enough to climb. There are oceans and rivers enough to cross, enough to last till the end of time. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. Lord, we don't need another meadow. There are cornfields and wheat fields enough to grow. There are sunbeams and moonbeams enough to shine. Oh, listen, Lord, if you want to know what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some. Oh, but just for everyone. Oh, but just for everyone. This is Mary Revisited. Okay, I'll try to talk louder. I believe that Mary Magdalene did not pray in darkness, but in daylight, her tears of her own choosing. Perhaps the dunes rose up to claim even that. What history did not anticipate is that even silence can escape, leaving a rusty chain broken deep in the desert. This is the lineage, then, of women toting Bibles, healing ointments, and sacks of dried blue chicory. Bad girls with direct eyes and split ruby dresses, carrying the secret words of lost prophets stolen from the rivers. Like them, I do not ask why, nor make careful measurements before taking the storm into my heart. Even if it leads to the hermit's cave with petroglyphs and shadows and Mary's bones upon the floor. Strike a match or fling your lantern against the sky. Her words are there, indeterminate like stars. The sister we never knew stood briefly on the sand, staring down her bleak end, knowing it for what it was, arriving in the end alone at the well, knowing she once loved someone like water. Karen Balder, 
I'm from Charlottesville. I um, often call myself a recovering academic <laughs> with a uh, training in architectural history, so I like structure. Um, I'm reading today um, with Hanoi, Vietnam, and Newark, New Jersey. That's cool. quite the pairing. <laughs> The first um, poem is by Sherman Alexie. It's kind of an iconic poem. And I read it in humility uh, because I am not Native American, but I've spent a lot of time out in the West and um, appreciate its many pains because of water. Go ahead. This is called Pow Wow at the End of the World written in 1996. I thought that was the drum. <laughs> I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall, after an Indian woman puts her shoulder to the Grand Coulee Dam and topples it. I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall, after the floodwaters burst each successive dam downriver from the Grand Coulee. I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall, after the floodwaters find their way to the mouth of the Columbia River as it enters the Pacific and causes all of it to rise. I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall, after the first drop a floodwater is swallowed by that salmon waiting in the Pacific. I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall, after that salmon swims upstream through the mouth of the Columbia, and then past the flooded cities, broken dams, and abandoned reactors of Hanford. I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall, after that salmon swims through the mouth of the Spokane River as it meets the Columbia, then upstream until it arrives in the shallows of a secret bay on the reservation where I wait alone. I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall, after that le salmon leaps into the night air above the water, throws a lightning bolt at the brush near my feet, and starts the fire which will lead all of the lost Indians home. I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall, after we Indians have gathered around the fire with that salmon who has three stories it must tell before sunrise. One story will teach us how to pray. Another story will make us laugh for hours. A third story will give us reason to dance. I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall when I am dancing with my tribe during the powwow at the end of the world. And um, actually, Polly told me that there is a powwow in Richmond this weekend. So there's a powwow in the middle of the end of the world, I guess. Um, this is a, something I want to share with you, and it has a visual. And no one's ever seen this before. Um, this was my sacred space um, on a four-day vision quest with the School of Lost Borders that I did in 2012. And my companion was a very old, twisted-up pinion tree, and we actually had a relationship. <clears throat> we had a fling that's saying something grandfather tree ancient, crusty, twisted pot-bellied but firm on his feet offers a seat that is too high to reach on him and when for shadow and sleep I grandly beseech him he pokes at my hair and picks off my hat narrows our boreal eyes jiving how about that? Smile slyly as we watch it fly off on the winds. And the offer of rest that he made, he rescinds. 
dropping bark on my face with a spider or mite, dropping his seed cone in the darkest of night, jabbing his presence into my face, into my butt, into my space, chuckling wryly when I trip on a bowl he acquired as an evil affront and made whole, prodding me constantly for my unmindfulness, lodging complaints for my native unkindnesses, Grumpily, grouchily, sure to remind my kind there was a time when this place declined my kind. When a 40-day fast by Paiutes and Shoshone put life on its edge as opposed to my journey, a mere figment of suffering with six gallons of water tied down in plastic. I'm a spoiled daughter. I flirt with life's end, but live far from the border between life and death, between chaos and order, as I plight my troth and ply my quest and draw all of my being close to Earth's breast. I fear for the littlest of sounds in the night, waiting on tender hooks for the first night. Where are you from? Shall I begin with the obsidian blade, or perhaps pyramid of the moon? The flames in my hair forged in Shenandoah's valley. My eyes first light in a Texas fort on a phantom hill. My hands drew water for the parched of Pueblo's battlefield. My feet stepped backwards across the Rio Grande when time for the babies came. My belly grew fat on Chinese broth boiled under westward railroad ties. My back bent over the arc light of a welder's flame, forging ships for liberty. Shall I end what I am? Heart on a mountain, remembering?